Johnson, B R I A N J O H N S O N. Okay, Anthony Santoro, A N T H O N Y S A N T O R O. Ron McHugh, R O N M C H U G H. Vincent R. Ransom, B I N C N T R R A N S O M E. Great. Okay, before we get into the interview questions, um, can I have each of you state the dates that you worked at RCA and your job titles there? All the job titles? Or just All the you game? can think of. Okay, uh, oh. the main one. Okay, um, Brian Johnson uh, began in September 6, 1976. I started out as an 808 operator and um, employed to present, and I'm currently and OA level three. Okay, and can you explain what those numbers and letters mean? Um, uh, the OA letter three, uh, uh, operation associate, and you have we now set different levels over the past, I guess, ten to fifteen years. And uh, uh, the, uh, at the level three means you can operate machinery as well as uh, do manual ins uh, insertion parts and uh, repair and rework. Okay, Mr. Okay. Yeah, Anthony Santoro. I started in November of 1980. I started as core winding department. From there, I was laid off, got picked up in Deford, became a warehouseman for about a year. From there, went back to Camden in the maintenance department as electrician. From there, got laid off from that point, went to a new facility in Bridgeport, was there for four or five years. Then got laid, we closed that facility, then went to the Deffer facility again as the maintenance mechanics. From there came back to Camden and maintenance mechanic. So that's where I've been. Great. Mr. McHugh? Uh, Ron McHugh started in October 1977. Uh, started in Deffer and later came to Camden. About a year later, uh, as a vertical transportation engineer, which is a freight elevator <laughs> operator, and then got in the maintenance department as a millwright rigger and been there ever since. Vincent R. Ransom, I started in May of May 25th, 1988. Just got out of the military, and uh, at that time they had a program going on for hiring a minority plus a vet. So I fell into both of them situations and it was a good time because I was hired then because I was a vet and because also I was a minority. And there was a young lady who got hired with me. We all started in Deford as packer operators. We had some pack material. And then from there we moved up to a warehouseman and did things with Jacks and went back and forth to Camden to the 17 building a couple of times and came back to Deford and eventually Deford closed. And, um, then we move from there back to Kim, which we are now at. Great, thank yes. you. Can you describe how you got your job at RCA? Uh, pretty much everybody was the same, same way. way. Uh, through family, my, my father got me in, and, and uh, there was probably about eight of my family members there. So that's why it was always a, uh, like a giant family. Everybody had at least half a dozen people that worked there at one time. And, Sure they have the same yeah, the same thing. My father worked for RCA. My uncles worked for RCA. My cousins worked for RCA. And some of their family worked for RCA. It's just, it was like a family thing. It was the place to be. Yeah, we put, um, same thing. My father was there, had been there for years, and uh, he had tried to get me to come there for quite a while. And, and just before I started working there, I worked across the street, which used to be uh, Camel Soup. And then eventually I came across and I've been there, you know, and my, my father retired, I believe, in just about the time these guys arrived, mm -hmm. just back in the early 80s. Well, I like these two gentlemen, um, I didn't have any family in RCA. And um, I came from, like I said, through a veterinary vet program. And um, it was a great opportunity for me. And, you know, coming out of the military after doing eight years in the military and coming home within, came home in February, within a couple months I got hired at RCA, I thought everything was just great for me. And, and to be honest with you, RCA has been wonderful to me through all the years I've been there and taking care of me and my family. Can you describe what you did at RCA? I'm sorry. What you did, what you did at RCA? Uh, 
I was a maintenance mechanic, which I was hired as an electrician from being laid off from one point to another. That was my big dream was getting into the maintenance department. But back then it was, you had to wait your turn. So I got a chance to get a job as a coil winding because I knew how to use voltmeters and whatnot. So I got a job there, did that job. If they liked you, they would try to keep, take care of you. It was like, it really was like a family there. So that job kind of went away. They found a position for me at the other facility. Worked there, then all of a sudden here comes the opportunity to go into the maintenance department into what I really wanted to do. Applied for it, they interviewed me. They said, great, we like you. I was there. From that point on, I've been in the maintenance department for 25 years or so. And everything from electricians, what I started as, then we became cross-trained, so they would send you to school. I do heating, air conditioning, just do a multitude of everything. We're just, you know, it was a place that you learned, you had a good time, and it really was a family. And the old building was like the city. You had to go from one building to another. Every day there was something different. And you were in a different, you met different people and went to different buildings. He just actually wanted to work with me all the time. He didn't want to say that. <laughs> but it was neat. Uh, when I got in the maintenance gang as a Millway Ritter, moving heavy equipment, operating heavy equipment, and whatnot, every day was something different. I mean, uh, just the most interesting things you could imagine. Uh, underground tunnels, we were putting steam lines in under the street. Uh, just th these buildings were 100 years old, so it was just everywhere you went was real old uh, you know, construction and whatnot. And, uh, from the powerhouse on the river, screen houses picked up the, the water to cool down the boilers, and, and just we, we made our own electricity way back when. Uh, we had our own power generating plant, and uh, just no matter what you did every day, it was something different. So it was interesting to get up in the morning, especially for a young guy who, you know, starting out and uh, uh, held their interest. At least uh, it held mine, I know that. Um, when I first started there, it was basically uh, they had just started hiring younger people. Uh, most of the people there had been there for years. I was like, the, maybe the second group of younger people that they started hiring. And when I started uh, basically putting parts on boards, as I started getting a little more proficient at that, uh, they moved me up to something that was called 810, which meant the people that built the parts, now I was inspecting. And then they moved me onto a machine that tested the parts, tested made, what made sure parts went in the correct way. Eventually, I, um, the job sent me to Texas to learn a uh, solder wave machine. And so it's kind of like, as the years have gone on, it's just different things that I've, you know, from starting from what I was doing, just building parts to the upper end near further toward the end of the process. And uh, it just always was always something interesting, like I said, you know, we, how I started because I started just a little bit before these guys. And like I said, when I did start, most of the people were nearing retirement age. And, you know, now it's like we, we've all been there so long and we're starting to see the exact opposite of where I came in. Well, like everybody said, it was always many things learned through our seeing and different jobs. I mean, went from putting a, a part in a little red box, which sometimes you may still see that little <coughs> red and white RCA box around, which has, you know, uh, been around forever. And from doing that to wrapping transformers to doing, to being on forklifts, to moving material around, to talking with older people who were older than us at that time and <coughs> learning a lot of things about RCA and just, you know, being able to be involved in every aspect of the job was great. Then, you know, coming to L3 was still still great because then I got to learn even more for like being a mechanic and learning how to do other things and, you know, being taught by a lot of these men right here and taught how to do a lot of things and that just made a experience of life uh, much more better and it all came from starting with RCA. My first job was uh, washing the labels off of radio tubes. That's how far back we go. So when I got in the maintenance gang, it was like, you know, I died and went to heaven. Because it was so much more interesting than sitting there washing tubes all day. But, you know, it was just one of the, the thousands of jobs that you had to do, so. RCA owns so much. I mean, we even were affiliated with um, JC Penney's um, 
You know, we, we, we made TVs and took the RCA labels off and put J.C. Penney's label on to move TVs into J.C. Penney's. And um, now, as Ryan said, you know, we, we watched tubes from other people, other companies off, so we put our RCA brand on tubes and things that we had to set out there in the world because people wanted that RCA name for a lot of things. And, um, you know, just a, a great experience of all of our work and things that we've done for the company. What kinds of wages and benefits did you guys earn at RCA? Excellent for the time. For the time, it was a great place. Medical was outstanding. Now times have changed <laughs> from back then to now. For everybody. Yeah. Right. I mean, it, it was, it really was a great place to work. They were family oriented. I remember my father worked there. They had a program called the Victor AA. That was a company and employee funded and run like entertainment program where you could get tickets to the parks cheap and they ran programs for the kids. I remember being like seven years old and going to a movie theater during Christmas and it was a Christmas party thrown by the company and the AA and you went in saw a movie which was the great thing. They gave soda, popcorn, you had a blast and on the way out they had a gift for all the kids. So you come in, imagine being a seven-year-old kid, all right? I'm 51 years old now. It's a long time ago, and all of a sudden, you, you, you're like the king. You, you get treated fantastic. That was one of the reasons why my father and everybody else said, you know, you might want to think about working at RCA. It was like the lights came back all again. It says, you know, it really was a great place. It kept my father, my family, got roof over their heads. We had plenty. We weren't hurting for anything. And I figured this would be great for me, for my family. And that's how really a lot of, uh, you'll find a lot of stories are the same way. And it was, it, if you knew people, you saw them on the streets, and it was, at lunchtime it was like New York City down there. People all over the place. And it just was a great, great place. The benefits were fantastic, and people were like dying to get in there. Family store, you could get televisions. Everybody who worked at RCA, had a television. Because the big thing with televisions were very expensive. One in every room, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah.